Hello again, you're watching Everod Junction and back after a short break over the uh, August period of the summer um, the weather was nice and warm most days so up here it was too hot really to do anything and uh, I've been taking advantage of the nice weather and doing as much work as I can on the uh, Granada that I showed you in the previous video so I've done a fair bit of work on that, there'll be another video to follow soon but uh, now the weather is starting to cool down I can come back up into the layout and uh, carry on with the uh, model railway. So today I'm going to be continuing with a project that I've had on the go for some time. Uh, you may have uh, seen the video I did ages and ages ago where I repainted a load of Backman uh, Mark II coaches into the Network Southeast colours and uh, ever since then they've been running on the layout very nicely but uh, I have wanted to detail them further and uh, make a few changes. Now on the layout I have had a rake of Network Southeast Mark I coaches, these coaches here, and I've wanted to mix them in with the rakes of the Mark IIs to make some more interesting passenger trains. Now that was very common in the 1980s, in fact it was normal to see Mark I's and II's bunched together in the same or differing liveries. The reason I haven't done it on the layout so far is because when you take a Backman Mark I and you put it in the same train as a Backman Mark II they look a little bit strange um, and the biggest issue is that uh, the Mark I sits higher than the Mark II. Now this has been known for a while and has been subject to debate on various forums I'm not going to go into which is right and which is wrong because it seems to be there are just as many people who will tell you the Mark I is too high and then there's the same number of people that will tell you the Mark II is too low so uh, I'll just uh, go through what I've experienced. So with discarding prototype information and uh, avoiding getting out any measuring equipment what it looks like to me is that the Mark I is about the right sort of height it matches a lot of the other stock on the layout very closely the DMUs and the Locos in particular it seems that the Mark IIs are a little bit too low. It's noticeable when they couple to Mark I's, and it's ever so slightly noticeable when they're coupled to various loco types. So, while I'm uh, doing the detailing project, I have been raising the Mark IIs by about a millimetre to bring them in line with the Mark I's. Um, by no means a perfect remedy, it does take the edge off the slightly strange appearance, and the rake does tend to look a little better. So, if we move down, this is the same Mark I coach, there's another Mark II, but it has been modified. And you can see that they're sitting about right. It's still not perfect, and you'll still find issues if you get uh, measuring equipment out, but it just looks a bit nicer to the eye. So I'm planning on making two passenger rakes out of this little lot, using the Mark I's and the Mark II's. And I have now modified all of the Mark II's the exception of that one at the end I've just showed you. So I've modified all the Mark II's so they look nice and in keeping with the Mark I's. It just looks a little bit nicer. So I'll show you what I did to achieve that. It's a very simple modification. It'll only take you about five minutes. Something else I will be doing, which I have already started, is adding lighting to the Mark II's. I've already got the lighting in the Mark I's. And I'll also be adding various figures. As you can see, they make a huge difference and bring the coach to life. Okay, so this is a piece of one millimeter thick plastic card, which I have uh, used a hole punch to stamp a hole into, and uh, then just roughly cut it out into a square. Don't have to be accurate. Next, remove the bogies as you just saw, and you can see the little tag just uh, just there. That's going to get in the way. All it does is stop the bogie rotating a certain amount. Um, we're going to need to get rid of it. So uh, just use a, uh, a modelling knife, scalpel of some description. 
and it can be uh, fairly easily removed. There you go. So now, take the, uh, the shim, put it straight over like that. And now, when we put the bogey back on top, that's lifted the bogey up about a millimeter, which should give us the height difference that we're after when it's coupled to a Mark I coach. And do the screw up, make sure I don't do it up too tightly because you can see this is now too stiff. That'll derail on corners. Back it off a tiny bit. There we go, that's much better. There we go, easy as that. So now I'm going to move on to adding the lighting and adding the various figures that bring the train to life. As you can see the lighting is very effective. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but uh, I personally like it. I think it looks very realistic, but uh, it's only really worth doing it if uh, you actually uh, go to the effort of making sure the rest of the layout is appropriately lit. Otherwise, all you're going to see is lit coaches. Okay, so uh, I've started uh, taking the Mark IIs apart so I can uh, fit uh, the people inside and the lighting. Um, I did a video ages and ages ago all about how I fit and do the, uh, the coach lighting. Um, since that video I've made some subtle changes to the way I do it, so I'll just run you through uh, those things. And for those of you that haven't seen that video, this will go as a little bit of a, a, little bit of a mini tutorial on the basics on how to do it. Okay, so I've removed the bogey from the toilet end of the coach, which is uh, this part here, and spottable on the coach with the blanked out window. You can see the, uh, the little plastic shim that uh, was fitted earlier. So the first thing to do is to uh, dismantle the two axles that were part of that bogey. So I've just popped them out, and uh, the wheels just push off. The wheels have a little plastic bush in the centre, so uh, they're just an interference fit on the axle, and they will uh, push off with a bit of force. Okay, with the wheel off, I've uh, placed it uh, just over an old wagon weight that has a hole in it. And I'm just going to push the bushes out. And sometimes these can be uh, quite easy to remove and other times they can be really stuck in there. So uh, I've got the end of a back-to-back -back wheel gauge, which you can see is a tapered fit. And it should go on the end there. There we go. That's just punched it down a little bit and now it can be levered out from the other side. You can see where the bush goes in it has like a little sort of top hat part and you can lever that with a screwdriver and uh, that will pull the bush out. Okay so the purposes of doing this is so uh, we can get electrical continuity between one of the wheels and the axle so that the coach will pick up power from the track and uh, turn the lights on. So the next thing is to get a small length of uh, this very, very, very thin wire, which uh, you can buy on eBay, there's a link in the description for that. Uh, this is where the method differs slightly. I used to use tin foil, um, and I would wrap it around the bush, place the bush back in the wheel, and that would pass electricity through the bush into the axle. But it was a little bit thinnicky, and sometimes when you put the mechanism all together, um, the tin foil would break. The wire although very thin, is much more durable and uh, you can assemble these quite quickly and uh, the electrical continuity seems to be uh, pretty much guaranteed because the wire, the wire tends to, uh, to not break. Okay, so I've cut a short length of the wire. This, uh, this wire is um, insulated, it has a, I think a type of epoxy um, painted over the top of it so uh, you will need to just uh, gently scrape off some of it um, with a sharp knife of some description. Don't need to do too much. So I've just cleaned the wire back a little bit and you can see I've put it through the bush and then when it comes round the top hat part I've looped it back around to go back through. So the two bits of wire there will go straight through the centre of the wheel and you put the bush back on as normal and that will give you electrical continuity between the wheel and then the axle which is inside the bush.
the bush was previously there to insulate the two. There's a closer look just there. So I'm just in the middle of putting the bush back in and you can see the loop of wire coming out from inside the bush where the axle would be. It then loops back over and is then sandwiched between the bush and the wheel and it does eventually come out the other side. So when I put the axle in that will uh, give us an electrical connection. Next thing to do is to uh, clean the blackening that is on the axle. Most manufacturers will put that on. These are Backman axles and they all have it. So just take a small sort of craft file, gently file away at the edges of the axle until you get back to uh, bare steel. Don't have to push very hard, you can be very gentle just to take the blackening off. Okay, so I've done that on both axles, got two axles that are nice and clean. We've got two wheels with the bit of wire running through the bush that will allow us to uh, contact the axle. So now I need to fit the pickup springs. Now these are made by DCC Concepts. They're very, very fine. There's a link for them in the description. You can see how fine they are. That's basically what they look like. They wrap around the axle and they provide a frictionless way of getting power up into the coach. So take the, uh, take the axle, take the pickup spring, slide it on there. I typically have the, uh, the sort of tail of it facing the wheel that is picking up the electricity, which uh, will avoid potential problems with short circuiting. Then I get the wheel started on the axle and then uh, I use a back-to-back -back wheel gauge to set the correct distance. This again is made by DCC Concepts, it's not very expensive, I recommend you get one, link in the description. So place the gauge in between the axle like so, making sure it's not stuck on anything that will uh, give you a, a dodgy dimension. And then uh, they can be quite stiff, especially with a bit of wire. So I put them on the, uh, the table and just push the wheel until it's flat and it's uh, got the perfect distance there. So that will run nicely on 00 scale track. Pull out the gauge. You'll have a little bit of wire sticking out the end of the wheel. You can cut that off now. That's not required. Okay, so uh, before you go any further, you've got to make sure it works. So uh, grab the multimeter set it to uh, continuity then I've got one probe sitting on the pickup spring another one sitting on the wheel and we can see on the multimeter that we have got a reading of zero that indicates there's no resistance there got uh, total continuity between the wheel and the axle which means that the rail that that wheel is sitting on will pass current up to the circuitry inside the coach Okay, so uh, the axles are now back in the bogey for the coach and you can see with the tails there on being opposite sides the wheel conducting electricity for this axle is on this side the other one is on the opposite side which means when it's on the track you've got one wheel on each rail which will get you one side being positive one side being negative and will run the circuitry if the wheels are on the same side they won't, uh, they won't work and also the advantage of this is uh, using the uh, the pickup springs is uh, it's uh, very free running as you can see there there's almost no friction at all so the coach will run basically as smoothly as it did when you got it out of the box it'll just weigh slightly more because it has uh, the uh, circuitry inside but that means you can have six coaches, eight coaches, ten coaches, nice long rakes, all fully lit, and they're not really going to put any more strain on the locomotive. If you've got a wiper system where you've got a physical piece of copper rubbing against the edges of those wheels, you will uh, have significant drag over the course of a rake of coaches, and you'll have problems with gradients. Some locos may not be able to pull it, etc. So I like using these because they're just a nice, simple frictionless system. Okay so I've been building up the uh, circuits for the lighting 
in the uh, previous video I made some time ago, I uh, showed you the uh, details of the uh, circuits and how they worked. Um, those are pretty much unchanged, uh, but I have made some small revisions just to make it easier to install and look a little bit better. So the first change I've made is the capacitor. This is a 1000 microfarad capacitor and it is considerably smaller than the 4000 microfarad capacitor that I was using previously. Um, so it just fits in the coach a little bit easier. You don't have to do so much hacking about of the interior. I've also uh, made a revision and used the very thin uh, wire and again super flexible installation is a little easier and the last thing I've done is uh, on the actual lighting board itself I've used the surface mount type LEDs uh, these are the warm white variety uh, the reason I'm using them is they just have a much more gentle spread of light over the interior of the coach than uh, a traditional LED so uh, I'll put the links for this stuff in the uh, description um, but that is pretty much all the changes they are as they were so here they are installed in some of the coaches and you can see that's the uh, toilet end um, the capacitor fits perfectly between the doors the circuit board itself can be stuffed between the middle of where the toilet doors would be so uh, they're nice and sort of uh, easy to install in that respect and then I've just done the usual cut the grooves in the top just to run the strip board strip through the top added a little bit of super glue in there as well just to stop them falling about and you can see as well I've started to add some figures I get the figures from eBay in uh, bags of about a hundred I think um, these are just the cheap Chinese figures they're not expensive at all but uh, these ones are painted with some degree of care uh, they do need a little bit of uh, alteration just to make them look a bit better. Um, the uh, skin tone is not painted, it's just the uh, self-coloured plastic. So I've painted those on so you can see I've painted his hands and his face. And the hair, it can be quite badly painted. But the actual clothing generally isn't too bad. And they're reasonable colours, they're not super garish bright colours, they're not too bad. So uh, they make quite a good addition. So I'll put links for those in the description as well. Um, the only modification you have to make is uh, because of the uh, seating arrangements in some of these coaches, um, you do unfortunately have to cut everybody's legs off uh, just below the knees because they won't fit under the table. Okay, I've got uh, the people and the lighting installed and uh, I've just done a little bit of weathering on the coaches that weren't weathered, one or two of them weren't, uh, the rest were. So I've just done those to match in with the rest of the rake. Uh, so we're pretty much ready to go now, but I'm going to do one thing that has been on my hit list for some time, uh, but uh, it's just one of those small jobs and I never got around to doing it. I'm also going to do it now because uh, I am mixing Mark 1s and Mark 2s into the same rake and uh, this will uh, make them look a little bit more prototypical. So this is a Backman Mark 1 and if you look on the roof you can see very definite ribbing. It's moulded in detail, it's quite pronounced, it's very obvious. On the majority of the real thing it is far less noticeable and when they were new it wasn't noticeable. Um, British Rail went to quite some considerable length to uh, weld the individual panels of the roof skin together in such a way that you couldn't see the join and when Mark 1 coaches rolled out of the assembly shop the roof appeared to be one smooth seamless piece and that stayed for pretty much most of their life and it only became noticeable in later years as these seams started to rust and uh, the paint on them started to flake off and moisture got in and they started to, de to uh, deteriorate but even on a bad example it's not as prominent as this Backman have also taken note of this and uh, as you can see on the latest versions of the Mark 1 that you can currently buy they have now smoothed the roofs. So I'm going to start uh, removing these and uh, I'm going to do it with uh, a brand new very sharp scalpel blade and uh, I should be able to just run it along the edge very carefully and just take off the majority of the ribbing. 
I'll then give the roof, which is as yet on the Mark 1s unpainted, I'll give it a shot of roof dirt just to blend it in and get rid of any uh, slight imperfections where I've perhaps stretched the uh, plastic and made it go a little white. So uh, hopefully they will look a lot more prototypical once I'm finished. Okay, so I've scraped off the, uh, the best that I can get off of the uh, roof ribs. Um, used a, a sharp knife on a scalpel just to uh, get the right angle on the roof and it just runs right off. And if it wasn't for these little roof ventilators, you could do it really quickly. And then I've just given it a shot of uh, roof dirt, so just masked around the uh, coach and then uh, just sprayed it with roof dirt. Alternatively, you could brush it on. You'd still get a nice effect. So it's still a bit wet in places, obviously you can see the uh, the shiny paint there. But you can see the difference, you can see how pronounced the roof ribs are as standard. And then that's uh, after the work has been completed. Obviously there's still a hint that they're there, you're never going to get rid of them completely, but uh, it just makes the coach look a little bit better and the slight evidence of the ribs gives you a uh, hint of the uh, coach's age and you can see the roof is starting to uh, deteriorate. And then the bonus is they do match the Mark II's a little bit better. Okay, I've uh, finished modifying the roofs on the Mark ones, and I've now painted the uh, roofs the appropriate colour. Nice uh, weathered, dirty sort of colour to match the uh, rest of the coaches. So that is all of the modifications complete. The only thing I have left to do is just paint the wheels on these two uh, BR Blue coaches. I'm going to have three British Rail Blue coaches within the rakes uh, just to add a bit of variety and again it's prototypical a lot of uh, coaches in the Network Southeast colour were often seen with these mixed in that hadn't yet been repainted.